I really hope the sound in this is okay because my mic suddenly developed issues in the test records here. If it's bad, I'm so sorry. Hi, I'm at Ryan here from Ball in Europe. I think most of the regular subscribers were expecting a video on the London Lions today and Zalgiris Kaunas. That is coming, but Wednesday we do videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday here. At least until the season starts, then we may be changing it up for the time being. That's the order for days for videos. So if you haven't already, please subscribe uh, to be and get, ring that bell to get all of our videos where I'm telling you what I think about assorted basketball things. And today we are obviously talking about the North. I mean, come on, where am I Vince Carter? Got my Vancouver Grizzlies cap on. It's time to look at what's happening with their men's basketball team and what they can need to do to get on a podium in LA 2028. So, Paris and Lille didn't go to plan. Well, actually, no, Lille went perfectly to plan. Paris didn't. Canada just played their socks off in Lille. Uh, it's a great place to watch basketball. Uh, I can tell you that from having been there 2015. I wasn't able to go over in person uh, this time. But um, yeah, they really, really impressed me. And I felt they had learned what they needed to learn from their experience losing to Serbia at the World Cup last year. Like They were never going to learn it in the two days between uh, that semi-final and the bronze where they beat the USA. Uh, one of the picks I'm uh, delighted I got right. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a weird one. And um, th I felt though that like, okay, we've seen it through the group stage and for the second straight tournament, they're the ones to knock Spain out uh, while still in technically group play. That was kind of cool actually. Uh, so thinking they've got it, they're there. And that first quarter against France, it's like they've learned nothing. They've learned absolutely nothing. What's going on? And uh, it was just frustrating to watch. It felt like all the lessons they'd learned about coping with the style of play they were going to get at FIBA level from the top FIBA teams it just hadn't been taken on board the way I thought they had. And for me as a viewer, uh, and like I should be biased towards the French, by the way, I run a pan European site, but I also like to see teams learn and develop and evolve. And I felt it was a sign of a regression back to last summer from Canada for where they weren't quite where they needed to be. So how do they get to where they need to be in LA 2028? The Germans. They had three remarkable summers. Uh, bronze in Eurobasket 2022. That was obviously rescheduled in the previous year due to the thing we don't talk about. Um, then winners of the World Cup last year, obviously beating both the USA and Serbia along the way. And then the big one, not the big one, but the big one they didn't quite get over the line in, the Olympics fourth place. But that's still an extraordinary trio of summers for a national side. Like, really, really impressive. And so my first thought was, well, can Canada take an approach like that? It would be a four-year plan rather than a three-year plan in this respect. So I figured I'd ask somebody, uh, somebody I, I, I like a lot, uh, and that's Doug, uh, Doug Smith of the, of, uh, the Toronto Star, uh, who I'm sure most of you have heard of. I wrote in to his mailbag, and Doug said some nice things to say. It's actually a great mailbag, so definitely we'll link to it below, and you should read it. But there's one key paragraph in his response to me that I want to get to, where I think he hits the nail on the head. The trouble we have on this side of the world is that the America Cup doesn't remotely match the Euros in importance. So that summer season, that's next summer, 2025, is lost every four years in getting the same group together. And that does appear to be the big issue. And we're going to get to that in the next segment in a bit more detail. But that summer doesn't have to be lost. But let's look at the two summers we know they do have. That is, the summer of the World Cup and the summer of the Olympics, should they qualify. And... I see a lot of upside there. Like you have a core group. If you focus on only so many players, it could be 18, it could be 24. It depends on what you want to do. I believe the Germans went off 24. You might want to narrow it down, giving it's a, it's a narrower window of 18 and essentially have them as your core guys and say, if you are if you want to be in the Olympic roster and like you may be going, what about SGA? Get to that in a second. We want you to be involved in some capacity this summer. And I think that can make a difference. And Obviously, injuries are allowed for in that. We saw the German model where, like, Mo, for example, missed a summer and other players missed summers uh, along the way because of injury related issues. But they still managed to keep, you know, us at the core from the key group altogether. And, you know, they were always there together. But what else did they do? They didn't just stick with the same guys. They learned a few things. Like, they realized they needed to impose a system that would work at that level. 
And the way they did it was one, great Canadian coach and Gordy Herbert, obviously, but also two, in realizing who their on floor leaders were. And, more, and I, by leaders, I don't just mean the best players, because obviously with Canada, you're all going to go, well, that's Shea. It's, it's not just about Shea. And don't worry, Shea is very important. He's an extraordinary basketball player. But it's not just about Shea. It's about finding who your guys are, who people will look up to, and who will listen to, and will play off and learn from. Uh, and also just like, bring the culture you want in to the team so in Germany's case it was Dennis Schroeder uh, he obviously one very talented player at this level particularly uh, but also you know long time German international and uh, you know a lot of the younger guys like your Franz Wagner for example would look up to a Dennis Schroeder like as the guy they you know grew up kind of going wow that's cool like a German player can be like you know a cool player in the NBA you know because like Dirk I'm wrong Dirk's an all-time great and he was cool to me but I'm a dork uh, so you know what we call cool is different when you're a kid and so like he was just Dirk was just really really good Dennis had a bit of you know pizzazz and um, then you have Johannes Seaman who I'm guessing a few of the listeners barely recall the name hearing it in the Olympics uh, Thiemann is not the guy for Germany but he is a workhorse but also he's used to being in leadership roles across the teams he's been with at club level which can translate very well to a national team format because you aren't together for the same length of time you are together for a very limited window it's not like you know a franchise in the NBA or a club in Europe where most of the year these are the co-workers you see every day it's a completely different dynamic this is like a project you're working on the project happens to be the national team going for major titles but it is still a project so these are sort of you know guys brought together some of them you work with every day but you're in a different environment with them it's a very different mold and so what it takes to win at that level is also different so that's these are the adjustments you've got to make in order to adapt to the on-court game as well and um, yeah Steve Kerr didn't learn from it, but he still got gold anyway moving on to the next point that is the problem So the America, Doug hit on it very well in his piece in the star, and I'm going to expand a bit more here. Its problem is that it's not Eurobasket, and I mean that in the kindest possible way. In that Eurobasket, Serbia, I expect to see the vast majority of that roster we saw give the Americans a part of their lives back next summer. And that includes Nikola Jokic, like barring injury or barring some major fatigue issues, and I mean extraordinary ones, even uh, and even accounting for a potential NBA Finals run. I expect to see him at that. Like that's the level we're going to see. Where he's, you know, there is this desire to win Eurobasket in Serbia. Likewise, Germany feels that they don't want the show to end right now. There's still real potential in this side, and they can, you know, go for more trophies with them. And Dennis Schroeder said he wants to play national team basketball till he's 40. Who might argue with that? In the America Cup, you don't see NBA players just flat out. Really, uh, they just rarely show up. Uh, rarely are asked to show up. Moreover, and if you ask the Canadian superstars, your Shays, your Dylans, uh, Nemhard, uh, you know, to show up next year in Nicaragua, that's where it's going to be on. By the way, um, then you know they're going to say for what? Like because largely speaking, they won't be playing the full strength sides of even the nations they're against. Like you know, even even your Brazils, your Argentinas, and of course your USA's aren't going to be at the absolute best they can be. So they'll be kind of going, are we going just for a trophy or what? But you can still get that group together and we'll get back to that. Um, but um, yeah, it's like, you know, again, this goes back to your leaders. They are going to recognize the issue here. And it's a huge, huge issue, um, to be honest, the America. But you could still have that summer. And I think that's where we get to in my final point. 2025 may not feature the stars of Canadian basketball, but it doesn't have to exclude them either. So the way I'm looking at this is you've got a few prospects in Canada, obviously, right now. I'm just going to, a couple of names that are coming up for me here. Efioso, Oliogu, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, Malcolm Gillen, uh, Elijah Fisher, they're all coming through. Get them involved in your national training squad, uh, you know, or at least get you know players like that. Get some of the college guys involved in the national training squad, and get your Zach Eddy off the back of what will be his rookie season uh, involved in the national training squad again. Obviously, he was in the World Cup squad as well. Uh, and get them involved in the training squad for a reason. Is you want to have them, and you want to say to the vets, it's important for you to be here as well. Use that summer as sort of a bonding of here's the vision we have for Canada basketball, with the eye on it being a medal in Los Angeles. 
Uh, and so you bring your young guys in, you bring in, you know, a roster you feel is one you can put together for the America Cup. Obviously, you're not leaving them aside. Uh, but, you know, and you work with the some of the older, the NBA players, the, the higher up guys who aren't going to go to Nicaragua, at least not as players, possibly encourage them to come along as part of the support staff, just to be clear. Uh, or maybe in background roles in some capacity so they aren't taking the shine or the attention away from the guys actually on the court. Uh, but you know get them involved in the training camps uh, in some capacity and uh, even if they aren't able to do active drills or whatever there's a lot of off-court work when it comes to working about developing the vision for what you want Canada to be at the World Cup at the Olympics in LA assuming you qualify which the level of talent you've coming through you really should be qualifying from the Americas Canada and even start installing the systems you want to see in LA like begin installing those with this group of you know players who are either potentially going to be sort of your bottom six or bottom four on the roster uh, come the world cup come the olympics uh, and also about getting in the mindset of those younger guys so that when everybody gets back together in the summer of 27 for the world cup uh, and a camp for that there is you know stuff coming back you know from the basement and there is familiarity like work on familiarity with not just each other because obviously NBA players you know so many of them know each other and the Canadians obviously have a good culture already but like on them working together on them understanding the dynamics of what it's like to work with each other because you only have so much time when it comes to a camp in summer when it comes to you know the run into a tournament and a tournament itself so if you've got a summer for the America Cup where you can go, listen, we believe that you guys getting together as a group, as co-workers, not necessarily as players, but as co-workers in the summer 25, that can help us get medals in 27, 28. And, you know, find your leaders. You know, work that out. Like, you'll be able to work that out as well with a lot of off-court stuff. And I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this already think they, you know, know who they are. So if you do, drop them in the comments who are Canada's leaders. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically it for this video. Uh, again, I'm really sorry if the sound of this is off. I'm so, so sorry. I'm hoping it's not. But either way, please subscribe and I will be getting on the mic issue as soon as humanly possible, I promise.